Good morning folks and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're keeping well. It's currently 5 a.m. We're up very early this morning. We're heading to the canals, the floating markets here in the Mekong Delta in Canto. Looking forward to exploring today. Never been here before. So if you do like the video, leave a comment, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a million. Let's go. So that was unreal, nice little experience there on the scooter which took literally probably 5 minutes taking us down to the pier. So the good thing about starting so early is we're going to be back early as well and have the rest of the day as well to do whatever we want. First we're going to enjoy this experience. So this costs us 850,000 Vietnamese dong which works out at about 32 euro which is very reasonable. Me and Lupe are going to have the boat together for us going through the canals, going to the noodle factory, the big floating markets as well so it's going to be unreal. <laughs> So Han, um, who looks like he's going to be driving our boat today, is cleaning it up for us, giving it a bit of a wipe down, so now it's time to get in. So we were worried about the mosquitoes and we started putting on the bug spray and Han said no, only at night time, so we'll apply it later when we need it. <laughs> It's interesting, you can see the, the river here is kind of a mix between the tourist boats like ourselves heading upstream and no matter what time you're, you seem to be up here in Vietnam, there seems to be people going about their daily life. Like it was quarter past five and we were seeing games of badminton happening. The market even itself, I suppose just the nature of it as well. We're, we're actually going late to the market here. It starts at about half four in the morning. It seems that the city never sleeps. Can't beat that. You can see this boat here now, full of veg, full of products, on the way to the market. Can't believe we're here in the Mekong Delta River now. Unbelievable. And our boat is going fairly slow up the river here, to be honest. Um, but I actually prefer that other boats are flying past with a load of people in it, like 10 and 12 people in a big tour. I much prefer our way. It's much more kind of um, relaxing. You can soak it all in as well and enjoy sun sunrises like this. It's mad, there seems to be loads of people living on the boats here as well. It's really cool to see the fact that they probably spend most of their time along the Mekong Delta River here is, is so, it's kind of hard to imagine, but obviously this is the way so many people in Vietnam live their lives. They live it through the river, through the market. That's where they make their living, so it's really fascinating to see it. That's a pineapple boat, you can see them all hanging from the roof there. Each boat seems to be filled with a different fruit or vegetable. Saw some mango boats, pineapple boats. Yeah, I'm getting hungry now with all these fruits. Yeah, that is the most amount of pineapples I've ever seen. A lot of pumpkins here, full of pumpkins, and they're absolutely huge as well. Hello! <laughs> and it's really nice, you can actually smell food being cooked here as well, which obviously gives something nice to the, to the atmosphere as well. So much food around the place at the moment. So that's amazing, we're just after getting a tea and a coffee here on the market from this lovely lady here beside me. She's quite an array of stuff, tea, coffee, whatever you need, she has it. Can't wait to get into this. Oh, that's good. Hot but good. Coffee is lovely. So I used to work in a farmer's market in Carlow town, and this is kind of taking me back 
in a way, obviously, it's very different. We're on the, the river here and people are trading. But I don't know, it just gives me memories of some really nice uh, times when I was working there. So if you are happen to be in, in the Carlow area every Saturday morning, check out the I Farmer's the Market, Market Square, or Potato Square, I think is the name of it. A lot of good fruit and veg available there for many different vendors from around the region. And Han has given us a pro tip here. If the coffee is too hot, you put it in a side here to not hold it all the time. Fair play, Han. So delighted to finally be able to do this. Um, we've been talking about it for such a long time. We're basically going up and down part of the Mekong Delta River in a boat in the floating market. Unbelievable. It's 20 to 7 a.m. in the morning and the sun is starting to rise a little bit and it's getting so hot already. So glad I brought the sun cream. We're after boarding like another boat and there's a lady cutting up some uh, pineapple and I believe we're going to get some of it now here, it looks unbelievable. She's cutting it in a very um, different way than I'm used to seeing, um, normally kind of more rectangular pieces but this one is like, you know you can get some potato on a stick that's like a, a swirl um, but it looks amazing. That's unbelievable, this chap is playing live music through the market as he goes. So we're coming up to the noodle factory now. It's one of the more famous places that people want to visit when they come to these canals along the boat. So that's our next stop. I'd say at the moment, the vast majority of people who are here are tourists. Everywhere you look, you can kind of see the boats full of people on either side of the river stopping, whether they're on like we were there, getting some pineapple, getting a coffee, or just buying the odd bit of fruit and vegetable. So I'd imagine a lot of businesses come here as well and buy kind of in a wholesale way where they're getting big bulk to take back to a restaurant. So it's definitely moments like this where I think we're happy with the decision of quitting our jobs, coming traveling in Southeast Asia. It's just, this is what living is about. So we're heading into the small canals now, which would be more famous. You'd, you'd always see them in the pictures, advertising tours like this. So yeah, it's kind of like we're heading into the jungle, maybe in the Amazon, but no, this is the Mekong Delta in Kanto. So back on dry land now and we're on our way into the noodle factory here um, feels a little funny walking again on the floor after being on the boat for so long. Let's see what's involved. Loads of rice there for the rice noodle. You have to hold it. Two hours. This is amazing. You can see here, they leave out the noodles all to dry and that they use about 500 kilos of rice a day, which is absolutely crazy. <laughs> Hello. What's your name? Huh? Do you like noodles? Are you the noodle factory dog? <laughs> so we're given a little bit of this noodle thing to try. It's quite tasty, I have to say. 
very good noodle here. Definitely worth coming in and seeing the noodle factory, how they make it, the process of actually making the noodle base itself and then how it's flattened. Uh, the whole process really is quite cool, I have to say. And then even if they get a little taste of one of the products as well, can't go wrong. And they have plenty of cool little dogs here as well that are very friendly, so this place gets a thumbs up from me. So that's the noodle factory taken care of, really cool. And I believe now we're going to explore the small canals. Uh, and yeah, again, looking forward to it. So I always thought that these hats that you see me wear now were mostly for the women. And to be honest, the, even the strap here looks very feminine. But Han, he was happy enough to give it to me, so maybe he's having me on a bit here and he wants to make people laugh at me or something like that. But to be honest, it's getting hot now and I'm happy enough to wear it, so thanks for the hat, Han. <laughs> so Han was telling me this boat behind me basically is transporting over a thousand kilos of rice absolutely huge they do things on mass here and um, everything is in bulk uh, and there's some amount of food going it's unreal this is unreal we're after basically leaving the market behind now and we're heading down uh, the river some more and there's really it's just us it's just this boat really there's probably i would say 100 meters either side of us as you can probably see there and it's all to ourselves really it's quite cool I do see one boat coming in the distance, it's so calm and peaceful here and what an experience so far. That's a lot of bricks. There's loads of mango trees and coconut trees right along the river here. Han was saying that like this is where people get a lot of their food as well which is nice. Like to be growing right along the river, it's quite cool, no? We've been on the move for probably, I'd say, 20 minutes now or so, and there's no one else around. It's literally just two of us here on the boat with Han, and it's so cool. You can hear the animals kind of, the chikaras in the background, I think they are. Hello! <laughs> Look at Lupe loving life. <laughs> so you can see the river here, probably I'd say maximum 10 meters wide, and really narrow. That's what they're called, the narrow small canals. And it's just quite a relaxing thing to do. The water's barely moving, and you would only see the odd boat, like behind me now, or the odd person who lives around the area, whether they're fishing or harvesting some of the fruit from the tree. But it's, it's, it's quite a, an experience. So before when we were heading deeper and deeper into this small canal you would see the occasional boat inside the house and they have kind of drying up now there, there's just pretty much us the further we're going in more food being grown along the sides you have dragon fruit or no passion fruit coconut mango each side of us it's quite good to see it all grown here that will probably be eaten locally by the people here <laughs> Hello! One of the lads back there was like dumping in a load of mud into the river. I don't know if that's actually something to do with the like setting up the construction of the river or helping it in some way, but uh, they were very happy to be filmed. This is exactly why we came here to Vietnam, to have experiences like this. Go down the Mekong Delta River, or one of them, in a boat, being told information about what it is we're looking at, what grows here, people in the locality, what they do. This is what travel is all about. This river is literally covered in different fruits and vegetables either side the whole way along. There hasn't been a break of it. There's just so much on offer here for the local people. I really hope Han has enough petrol to get us back out of here because we are going deep into the Mekong Delta.
So Hannah's just after dropping us onto uh, land here again. He's gone a little bit further downstream, not that far. I think it's only like a minute or two of a walk and we're gonna meet up with him there. But he said to walk along, but there's a lot of fresh fruit uh, here that we can uh, possibly try. So looking forward to doing that. Look how beautiful that looks. It's like a really nice looking pineapple. Obviously far from being ripe, but it looks amazing. Look at the color of that. And some beautiful looking jackfruit that looks pretty ripe. Maybe we can try this, but it's everywhere. So I would imagine the people here, there's several houses along uh, the sides of the river here. I would be guessing that they would just use the fruit here that's growing beside them in the floating market or different markets where people would be willing to buy it. Hello. Chin chow. So we're after getting one of these rice balls as well. It has rice, sugar and coconut. It's tasty and it's good for providing energy because we need a bit of that as the morning goes on. <laughs> 20,000 long. Oh, nice. <laughs> fresh. Very fresh, yeah? Mm, fresh. So it was really nice there when we got out of the boat. We were walking along the edge of the river and we came across a family who were just kind of going about their daily lives. We waved to the kid and another guy passed us in his boat. He must have been on the way to the market, but. Uh, this is part of coming here as well, is to see the people interacting in the countryside and the rural areas and seeing what life is like here. It's just so calm here now. All you can hear is the odd movement in the trees from a bird, maybe a kid in the background, and it's just so relaxing and calm. We're just after getting the freshest mango I've ever eaten, and it is so tasty, so moist, just what we need now because it's getting very really warm. I have to say it's been really nice being away from all the people in the city. For the whole morning it's been pretty much just me and Lupe and of course our nice uh, guide here Han who's been very very good to us. But look it looks like we're heading back now which has to be done but to be honest I could stay here for the entire day. It's just so relaxing and so calm but uh, what can you do? <laughs> Me wrong. I love interacting with tourists and the local people, meeting new people, getting to know them but sometimes it's nice just to get away from all that, the hustle and bustle of the city and relax here in nature. The name of this beautiful hat that I'm wearing now is called Nong La and Han has just pointed out that it's, it's all around us here and um, growing in here so it's cool to know that this item has come from the riverbank here that we're going down. So the sun is much higher in the sky now and it's really really warm, completely different to this morning when it was much more um, early and the, the sun basically was rising up and there was no heat at all but now it's getting really hot. So we're going to pass the floating market again and it'll be interesting to see if there's anybody left there because it's about half nine, quarter to ten now I believe, normally running in the early morning. So uh, let's see what's left. Definitely a good few boats left here, definitely not as much as the early morning when we were here. It's obviously much hotter now, I'd imagine that would turn a lot of people off staying out in the sun for a while but there are a few people still around selling their stuff. Oh yeah, the legs are definitely a bit wobbly. Um, we've been sitting down in the boat for a long time, so it might take a few seconds to get used to it. But what a morning. So that was 65,000, but we gave Han 100,000 because we're just sounding like that. We, he was excellent today, so we wanted to kind of just say thank you. And yeah, highly recommend doing that. Such a nice experience away from the bustling city, as I said before. Go, 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 go. Okay. Thank you very much, Han, an absolute pleasure. It's been great.
So that's it, back at the hotel now and what an amazing day exploring the floating market, the small canals and the noodle factory. I would highly recommend anybody coming to Canto to do something like this. The guide who brought us along was absolutely so uh, helpful. He knew all about the location that we're in, which is obviously a plus. Um, the food was so tasty and just it was such a fantastic experience. This is exactly why we wanted to come to the south of Vietnam to experience something like this see the locals going about their normal day in the small canals just to experience what life is like here. We paid about 850,000 Vietnamese dong which worked out at about 15 euro each. We also ended up paying probably 65 Vietnamese dong for the food that we, we got along the way, the coffee and drinks and that sort of thing. If you did find this video useful, maybe now you want to come and visit Canto, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, leave us a comment and let us know what you thought. Um, we're going to be making plenty more videos about Vietnam and Southeast Asia in the coming weeks and months. Thanks a million.